Well, I've shrunk myself down so we can look at really tiny objects. There are three sorts of radiation you need to know, alpha, beta and gamma. And you need to know that neutrons can fly around as well. Looking at alpha radiation, well that seems to have a mass of four and it contains two protons. So it must have two protons and two neutrons. In fact, it's a helium nuclei. It's a helium atom with its two electrons stripped off. It has a plus two charge. Next is beta radiation. That has no mass and it has minus one protons. Okay, so minus one protons, that really means an electron, I suppose. There we go. Oh, dropped it. Come on, there we go. And the third sort of radiation is gamma radiation. Well, that looks like a, well, you can't really see it. Gamma radiation, your eyes aren't sensitive to it. But it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum, very, very high energy. Oh, oh, geez, there he is. Sorry about that, Dr. Atkinson. And so the symbol for gamma radiation looks like an eight with the top cut off. And it has no mass and it has no protons or no charge, no electrons. So it's just a gamma sign. And finally, the neutron that has a mass of one and no protons. So alpha, beta, gamma tend to go together, but the IP also want you to know about neutron radiation as well. Now, since we are doing nuclear chemistry, we are only interested in the nucleus, in this case, a uranium nucleus, the orbiting electrons we don't deal with. So this is uranium, 92 protons, and a mass number of 238. And this uranium nucleus can spontaneously lose an alpha particle. This is called alpha decay. So don't forget, an alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. So it isn't uranium anymore. Uranium has 92 protons. This just lost two protons. So now it's thorium, which is 90 protons. You've made a different element. Now notice how the numbers at the top here must all add up. And the numbers at the bottom must also all add up. This is a nuclear equation. Different elements are made. So here is an isolated neutron. Uh, we'll pretend it's in the nucleus. Now a neutron can spontaneously turn into a proton and an electron. Now that electron's got very high energy uh, and it came from the nucleus, not from the electron shells. That's very strange. That's called a beta particle, a high energy electron that came from the nucleus. Now the mass of the atom's gonna be the same. The neutron turned into a proton. They both have essentially the same mass, but it has one more proton now. So it is gonna be a different element. Looking at carbon, that's got six protons and in this case, eight neutrons. So a neutron there can spontaneously turn into a proton. That's no longer carbon anymore. Carbon has six protons. This is nitrogen. It has seven protons. Now in all of this nuclear chemistry, we don't worry about the electrons in the orbitals. We don't worry if it's an iron, positive or negative. We just look at the nucleus. So let's take a look at nuclear fission. That is breaking up heavy nuclei into smaller ones. So we've gone back to our uranium to thorium. I'm going to put that alpha particle back on. And actually, I don't need uranium 238. I need uranium 235. So that means I'm going to need to rip off one, two, three neutrons. because the isotope that I want to use to demonstrate this is 235. It doesn't work with 238. Alrighty, put this plank of wood back over because I'm not interested in the thorium or the alpha particle. Okay, so we're back to uranium 235. Now, if I was to smack that nuclei with a neutron, there's a neutron there, So now I've got uranium-236. Now why am I doing this? Well, it's actually in the syllabus. Now it's still uranium, it still has 92 protons. 
Now, uranium-236 will undergo fission. That means the heavy nucleus will split. Now, this is the principle of a nuclear fission reaction. So I've made two new elements, and I've got a couple of neutrons left over. Now, if you were to weigh all of these, you'll notice that they are lighter than the original uranium atom. So what happened to that extra mass? Well, that mass turned into energy, as in E equals mc squared. And these two extra neutrons can go on and then hit another uranium atom, split it, produce energy, and produce more neutrons. And that continues and continues, and that's why it's called a chain reaction. And if you let this get out of control, you've got a nuclear explosion. And if you can control it, you've got nuclear energy. So to recap, nuclear fission is where a larger nucleus breaks apart to form smaller nuclei, and it releases energy. This is a fusion plant. There's the fusion reaction there. Well, not really. It's just a cartoon. This is where lighter elements are combined to form heavier elements. So we have two isotopes of hydrogen. They have the same atomic number, one. Each of them has one proton. That's the green sphere. That has a mass number of two, and that one has a mass number of three, so you can work out the number of neutrons. It's the difference between the two numbers. Now this hydrogen isotope does not want to combine nuclei with the other one because they repel. They both are positive. But if you get enough energy into that collision, they will actually combine. And that's called nuclear fusion. So you can see that helium is made, one neutron, and a lot of energy. If you weigh the helium and the neutron, it is lighter than the two isotopes of hydrogen that you started with. So what's happened to that mass? Well, it's converted to energy. E equals mc squared. Now this energy source is what they're working on for the future. It's 20 years away, but they've been saying that for years. It produces loads and loads of energy, and helium as its only pollution should solve the world's energy crisis. Wow, that's one hell of a suntan, Dr. Atkinson guy.